Welcome to St. John's Lutheran Church, Springfield, Ohio. Today is December 9th, 2018. This is the second Sunday of Advent. St. John's is located at 27 North Wittenberg Avenue, Springfield, Ohio. Our telephone number is 937-323-7508. Next Sunday on December 16th, we will have one service that day at 9.30, but we will be having a breakfast from 8 to 9.15, and then at 9.30, the cantata, which is an all-musical service.
grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you.
Jackson will continue the reading. The second reading this morning is from Philippians chapter 1. I thank my God every time I remember you, constantly praying with joy in every one of my prayers for all of you, because of your sharing in the gospel from the first day until now. I am confident of this, that the one who began a good work among you will bring it to completion by the day of Jesus Christ. It is right for me to think this way about all of you, because you hold me in your heart. For all of you share in God's grace with me. Both in my imprisonment and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel. For God is my witness. How I long for all of you with the compassion of Christ Jesus. And this is my prayer. That your love may overflow more and more with knowledge and full insight to help you to determine what is best, so that in the day of Christ you may be pure and blameless, having produced the harvest of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ for the glory and praise of God, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Christ comes into your life, things are not the same. When Christ comes into your life, earthly values and earthly measuring sticks don't matter as you have a new relationship with God in Jesus Christ and you realize that the things of God are far more important than the things of earth. And the things of earth are only worthless trinkets compared to the gift of everlasting life through that faith in Jesus Christ. So when Jesus comes into our lives, we give ourselves over to Jesus and let him control us, let him sustain us, let him maintain us. When Jesus comes into our life, we then become a disciple of Jesus Christ. And what is a disciple? A disciple is one who imitates their teacher. Mark Luther had them put a best. When speaking of being a follower of Jesus, he says, quote, we become a little Christ unto our neighbor. That's what being disciples, we become a little Christ. We go out the things of the world that seem so important. And instead, focus on the kingdom of heaven. How many times did Jesus give us parables about people who focused on earthly things and had them all grown up with judgment that he came? Or how many times did he give a parable of someone who focused their life on earthly things and then lost them for whatever reason? We cannot endure. The judgment of God without Jesus Christ. We cannot sustain our life, maintain our life on earthly value, earthly trinkets, in the face of all things God. But when we have that relationship with God through faith in Jesus Christ, we have those new values and that new focus. Question number two. Who can stand? The word stand is a Hebrew word that means to abide in something. It means to continue something. It means to stand, continue standing when something's going on. Now, when we usually use the word stand, we think of standing upright like I am right now. Or we think of someone making a stand for a cause or a purpose. We think of a military hero who stands firm in the face of battle. We think of an athlete who stands strong in the face of adversity when the game is going against them and yet somehow they stand firm and are able to rally the team to come back for victory. But the word stand also mean, can mean, can mean, our character. It can mean our ethical and moral self. So who can stand before God? Who can stand before the Lord Jesus when He comes in glory? If you're not in a relationship with Him, you can't stand. If you're simply living life based on thinking you're a good person and you do good things and you have a high standard of morals, high standard of ethics that you try not to break, and you think that's going to get you into heaven, you will not be standing on judgment day. That you'll be cringing in fear. Hoping like Adam and Eve in the garden when they were hiding, hoping that God wouldn't find them. God wouldn't know where they were, but of course God knows. And so, to abide and to continue we believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. But Christ is a stumbling block to the reason of people. Rationally, people just can't understand God's plan of salvation. It just goes against reason. This is why Martin Luther told us that when it comes 
just a matter of faith. We're not talking about an academic issue. We're not talking about science issues. We're not talking about politics. We're talking about faith. When it comes to faith, oh, this advice would be good in those areas. When it comes to faith, you put scripture above reason, not reason above scripture. Because you have to let God be God. And we do not know the magnificence of an Almighty God. We cannot, com cannot comprehend an Almighty God. That's what Daniel Webster, the great senator or from Massachusetts during the days leading up to war between the states, said when asked about his faith, he said, I must have a superhuman seed. That is why I believe in Jesus Christ. If I can understand everything about God and Christ, if I could do things without Christ, then God would be no different than me. Heaven forbid God be like me. So we don't use reason. And because Jesus confounds reason, he becomes a stumbling block to many people who will not give up that arrogance of their reason. Who think that their minds just know everything. They're just so intelligent. Why well, they hate the SAT and the ACT, so they know it all. But reason takes us down stupid paths, ignorant paths. It takes us down paths that make us a ridicule, a joke in front of other people. For example, just the latest attack on our faith. Some so-called associate professor of clinical psychology and sexual behavior has sent out a tweet saying that God violently attacked the Virgin Mary. That the Virgin Mary did not give her consent, therefore the Virgin Mary belongs to the Me Too movement. And he was serious. And at the end of his tweet, he put happy holidays. Of course, he got all kinds of responses from Christians who told him he was so far off base, really, it wasn't more answer to his talk was so ridiculous. But he was trying to say, well, Mary couldn't protest because God was a God who we see in the Old Testament if you said no, came back and punished you. But the God of the New Testament does not act like the God of the Old Testament. And the God of the Old Testament did not act that way as much as people try to portray him. When he did certain things that defy our reason because it's sin stained. He was doing it to make a point about salvation and faith. But in him going on, he, he is, like I said, the saying that Mary didn't have a choice. Yet he totally does not understand the day and time in which Mary lived. A time like that of Malachi, when the people were saying and questioning, wait, Lord, how much longer do we have to wait? They were looking forward for the coming of the Messiah. They were eager for the Messiah. They knew the prophecy of Isaiah. Their virgin shall conceive and bear a son. And he shall be called Emmanuel, God with us. And so she was overwhelmed with joy that the Almighty God had come to this no-nothing town of Nazareth and chosen her to be the mother of our Lord Jesus Christ. And for a woman who supposedly was assaulted, because I won't use the four-letter word that he used because it's such an ugly word and describes such an ugly action, and only a coward would do it. This was Mary's reaction. The Mary who was bullied into this. The Mary who should be violent and complaining against God. Luke chapter 1, I'm sure this guy never read it. Why not once we all love the guy? I, said, I just love it when secularists who don't believe in God, don't believe in the Holy Spirit, try to define in theology for us. 
And he had put the end of it. Okay, what are you, what are you going to say about Muhammad? Because he, he know. In the Quran, it's if you insult Muhammad, the penalty is death. You can't insult the prophet Muhammad. You can insult Jesus Christ all you want. You can insult Christianity all you want. You make perverse movies, perverse art. You can tweet stupid things like this guy. That's fine. Don't you dare say anything about it, Mom. But this is Mary's response to the angel telling her, the angel Gabriel telling her that she had been chosen. Luke chapter 1, verse 46, what we know as the Magnificat. My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. Now, does that sound like someone who has not given their consent and not full board into what's going to take place. My soul magnifies, glorifies, exalts the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has looked on the humble estate of his servant. And for, for behold, from now on all generations will call me blessed. For he who is mighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name, and his mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. And the word fear here is just like when we talk about fear in the first commandment, we should fear, love, and trust God above all things that needs to be in all to worship. To listen to above our reasoning, which is Martin Luther described as the devil's Put it nicely, the devil's playground, but what he really said was reason is the devil's lady of the lady of the old people. That's what our reason is when compared to Holy Scripture. But this guy thinks he's really cute and brilliant by trying to put the Virgin Mary into the Me Too movement. Which all that does then is to take away the effect. People can misuse something. There are women, of course, who have been sexually assaulted, violently attacked, and rightfully should be me too. But then, unfortunately, there's those ladies who use it just because they want the revenge or they're angry or whatever. We're all familiar with the Duke of Cross team story about the women in the men's lives that turn upside down because of false accusations. Um, you all probably don't know about this because I don't think it made national news, but a couple years ago, a local basketball, university local basketball player was accused of violent attack on a woman until video came out. Of course, you know, and people today, they videotape everything, and people got their camera. Showing this girl drinking beer and partying with her friends at the time the attack was supposed to be made, and he was in another room. And then you have young ladies, unfortunately, who go to a dorm room or an apartment or a motel, and they engage in activities with a young man, and then when they're done, they realize they've jeopardized their marriage or their fiance relationship with their fiance, or they've uh, put their job in danger, and so they create this crime sexual assault or sexual violence when it's completely trying to cover up for their behavior. Now that's not saying a woman goes in a situation that doesn't have a right to say no. But she says no, the person stops or supposes. But don't use it as an excuse for behavior that you did well. And that's what this guy's doing by trying to say the Virgin Mary was assaulted by God. He is making basically uh, putting down the women who truly need this. It's like the dis discrimination. When my wife, she worked retail for 25 years, manager of every woman's store that used to be in the mall. Brewers, casual corner, petite, sophisticated, learners, on and on and none of them. One year she took off from retail to be a bank teller. I'm telling the story. 
And she was working with a young minority girl who was doing a terrible job and was going to be fired. So Gina tried to talk to her. Take it. You're going to get fired. She said, no. So they tried to find out to bring up the race car. And that was a misuse and an insult to people who really were discriminating against. But that's what unfortunately happens when you have these kinds of things. And that's what this guy is doing with his little tweet, making me so clever. Because he's letting his reason try to turn scripture. Instead of letting the scripture from his mind. And so that's why Jesus is a stumbling block. That's why there are people today who don't even want to hear about Jesus, who they think they're so smart that they don't need to see. They think they're so smart that somehow they can earn their own salvation, or they just don't believe it. They just don't worry about it. And after all, but how surprised they'll be when they leave this earth. And they come face to face with Almighty God. And he says, guess what? I do exist. But that's their choice. That's why the prophet says, who can stand? The Jews thought themselves righteous. Because they obeyed the law. But they obeyed it by canon. They obeyed it by head knowledge. But they felt nothing in their heart. So what did Jesus do in the Sermon on the Mount? He showed them how wrong they were. He said, you have heard it was said of old, you shall not kill. And I tell you, if you hate somebody in your heart, you've already murdered. And you have heard it was said of old, you shall not commit adultery. But I tell you, if you lust for someone in your heart, you've already committed adultery. See, the heart, that's where faith is. That's what God looks. Other prophets will come and say, I don't want your sacrifices. I don't care about your holidays. I don't care about your incense. I want your heart. And so one prophet said, rid your hearts, not your garments. Because that's what's important. Faith triumphs reason. Because we cannot put God in a little box. We cannot put him in a test tube. And somehow analyze. He is greater than us. And so no longer can we stand on works of righteousness. No longer can we abide in legalism. Instead we trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus came in humility. The Son of God. Born in a man. In a stable. Placed in a manger. His first uh, encounter was with his mom. And his stepfather. And the animals in the uh, stable. Until the shepherd showed up. He wandered from town to town preaching. He was an itinerant preacher. He didn't even have his own synagogue that he was around. Then he was betrayed by one of his own hand-picked followers. One of the twelve who were to pass on or continue his work and pass it on to others. That makes no sense. It defies human reason. <laughs> but that's God. And so without Jesus Christ, we cannot stand. As Jesus said himself in Matthew 11, 6, Blessed is the one who is not offended by me. Blessed is the one who is not offended by me. We're not offended when we allow that scripture over reason. And the third question is, who can be cleansed? The imagery, that of a refiner's fire and fuller soul. These are images, imagery of clean, cleansing, strong cleansing. Both words have the idea of purging something of anything, to remove impurities, to cleanse from sin, to purify. Of course, a refiner's fire is to melt impurities out of metal and other items. Fuller soul is what the tanner used to wash lamb's wool to make it white. To do with, with any stains in it. Only Christ can cleanse us and make us righteous before God. And he does it through a sacrifice and death on the cross. His blood pays a debt of sin that we owe, and washed in the blood of the Lamb, we had to give the salvation. 70 AD, the temple was destroyed by Titus, the son of Aspasian, the emperor of Rome. It has never been rebuilt. That's God's son. I'm showing us 
The salvation no longer is in the sacrifice of bulls and sheep and goats and doves. Salvation is through the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. And that is who cleanses us. And so in this Advent season, as we have great awakened, return, we do not sit around and do nothing. But we share the good news of Jesus with others. We reclaim Christmas. We take Christmas back from the retailer and from Frosty and Rudolph and make it back what it is. Don't say happy holidays. Someone say Merry Christmas. If it wasn't for Jesus, there is no Christmas. When you ask the United States S. Grant signed the bill making Christmas a national holiday, he was signing the bill of making the celebration of the birth of Christ a national holiday, not Frosty and Rudolph and the Elves, and the Grinch, and everything else that has tried to just push out the birth of the Savior Lord. And so we don't consider it. We're not like those Thessalonians who thought Jesus was coming soon, so they quit working and just sat around and expecting the church to support him. And St. Paul sent him a letter that said, if you don't work, you don't need it. So they bet they got back to work real quick, and the church quit giving them free meals. We are supposed to be at work in his vineyard, in his fields, bringing in the harvest. For when he returns, it will be too late to be cleansed. When he returns, the cleansing should have already taken place. Often, like the Jews in the days of the prophet Malachi, we can feel discouraged. We can feel that God isn't listening, that everything is going wrong for us and right for everybody else. At such time, remember Jesus is with us. Jesus is there to encourage us, to strengthen us, and to comfort us. Jesus is with us because he came so that we could endure, so that we could stand, and so that we could be cleansed from whatever happens to his Lord. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Amen. Please turn to page 217 in the front of your worship. I invite those who came that difficulty to please stand. If we the whole church, let us confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, the only Son of our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary. Suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their lives. Holy God, who prepared the way of our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son. By the ministry of John, prepare our hearts by repentant faith for Christ's glorious return, joyfully receiving the forgiveness of sins and serving you in willing obedience. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Almighty God, we give thanks for the unity of faith that makes your church one mystical body of Christ and for the partnership in the gospel we share with fellow congregations and the earthly fellowship of our sin. Keep us steadfast in your word of truth and the good news of life and salvation. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Almighty God, our King, grant your protection to those who serve in the military and grant your spirit to God those who minister to them proclaiming your word of life and salvation. 
Rebuke your us faithfully to serve you by fulfilling our daily vocations and duties in our homes, at work, at school, in your church, and as citizens. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Almighty God and Father, your Son revealed his love and his compassion toward the poor and the forgotten, the despised and the lonely. Look with mercy on those who have no work and cannot provide for themselves and their families. Let them find gainful employment so they can rejoice over the fruits of their labor. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Almighty God and Father, you hid the sick and defeated death by the resurrection of your Son, O Lord. According to your gracious will, heal the sick, comfort the suffering. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Almighty God, our Father, fill us with your Spirit, that our love may abound more and more in knowledge and depth of insight and discerning what is best, we may be pure and blameless until the day of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Father, to your hands we can and offer him we pray. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated.
Wisdom for life with you. For your word of life, O oh God, we give you thanks and praise. Through Jesus, your word made flesh. You speak to us and call us to witness forgiveness through the cross. Life to those in tune by death. The way of your giving love. For your word of life, O oh God, we give you thanks and praise. Send your spirit of truth, O oh God. Rekindle your gifts within us. Renew our faith. Increase our hope. And deepen our love. For the sake of a word in me. Faithful to your word, O oh God, draw near to all who call on you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, keep you in his light and truth and love, now and forever. Our worship and prepare the Royal Highway, hymn number 264, in the back of your worship, hymn number 264. concludes our service for today. 
Uh, the lighting of the Advent candles, Advent candles this morning was done by Nelson and Linda Smith. The flowers on the chancel stands are the glory of God and presented by Cindy and Les Pearson and family in honor of Bill de Selim's birthday. Pat by Pastor and Gina Fa uh, Pollock in honor of Matthew and Sarah's wedding anniversary. And by Linda Fox in honor of uh, family birthdays. St. John's is located at 27 North Wittenberg Avenue, Springfield, Ohio. Our telephone number is 937 323 7508. St. John's has a food pantry open Wednesdays. 9 to 1045 outreach store open 9 30 to 1 monday through friday closed on thursday rainbow table is every friday from noon to one everyone is welcome